Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, Illinois. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. The bishop-elect of the Diocese of Rumbek in South Sudan was shot at by two assailants on the night of April 25th. Father Christian Carlasare, who suffered a bullet injury, has been hospitalized and is reported to be in a stable condition. Two armed men broke into his room at the bishop's house and shot him. Father Carlasare will be transferred to a hospital in Nairobi, Kenya for further treatment. The Camboni missionary has been serving in South Sudan since 2005, and he was appointed bishop of Rumbek, where the seat has been vacant for almost a decade. Father Carlosare's Episcopal consecration is scheduled for May 23rd, Pentecost Sunday. In the U.S. state of Montana, a legislation codifying the right of people to challenge government norms that interfere with their faith has been signed by the governor. The bill put forward by Republican Senator Carl Glimm mandates that the government should have a valid reason to violate a citizen's right to freedom of religion and enforce it in the least restrictive manner. The new legislation has been hailed by the Alliance Defending Freedom, which said that citizens should not be left defenseless when the government tries to burden their ability to live and worship according to their faith. Meanwhile, opponents fear that the law will permit businesses to challenge ordinances in cities prohibiting discrimination in housing or jobs based on sexual orientation or gender. In what will be the biggest gathering of pro-life supporters in the U.S., the National Prayer Luncheon for Life will be held on April 30th to facilitate high-impact pro-life outfits. During the event, an award of $85,000 in grants will be given to an effective pro-life ministry and advocacy group. The nominees are, and then there were none, Focus on the Family, Sidewalk Advocates for Life, Students for Life of America, and the Susan B. Anthony List. The nominees were chosen for their proven impact and measurable success in saving lives and in winning wars against the abortion industry. During the event, which will be held in person in Grapevine, Texas, as well as virtually, the winners will be selected based on the number of votes cast by pro-life supporters across the country. It was a day of rejoicing for Catholics in Guatemala when three Spanish priests and seven lay people belonging to the Congregation of the Missionaries of the Sacred Heart were beatified on April 23rd. Jose Maria Gran Sirera and nine companions were killed between 1980 and 1991 for defending the rights of the poor at a time when the church was facing persecution. The beatification ceremony took place at the Colegio del Rosario in Santa Cruz de Quiche and was presided over by Monsignor Rosolini Bianchetti Bofelli, the Bishop of Quiche. In the papal message, which was read out by Apostolic Nuncio Archbishop Montesilio Padilla, the Holy Father says that the three priests and seven lay people bore heroic witness to the Lord's kingdom of justice, love, and forgiveness. Meanwhile, in China, religious persecution continues unabated and now with the authorities increasingly targeting Christian orphanages. Several orphanages run by church and other Christian denominations have been shot down by the government and when they introduced new regulations in February 2018 under the guise of repressive clause that mandates charitable activities must not be used to evangelize. The Chinese officials are forcing Chinese Christian orphanages to cease operations. Last week, authorities in Zhaoxian, in Hebei province, closed an orphanage run by the Sisters of the Child Jesus Congregation and forcibly shifted dozens of disabled children and adult orphans to government shelters. Christian organizations such as the International Christian Concern have slammed the crackdown on children's homes. 
A Catholic priest from northern China has appealed to Pope Francis to speak on behalf of the orphans and stop the persecution. An Italian lay missionary has been killed in Chimbote, Peru, where she was serving minors and poor women. 50-year-old Nadia de Munari was attacked by an assailant with a machete while she was asleep on April 21st. The attacker also tried to strangle her with a metal cord. Fellow missionaries found her lying in a pool of blood when they came searching for her in the morning as she did not turn up for prayers. She was given first aid at a local hospital and taken to Lima where she underwent surgery. However, her life could not be saved. The missionary was running the Mamma Mia Center in Chimbote, which provides free food to poor women and minors. The Bishop of Chimbote has condemned the attack and urged speedy investigation to bring the culprit to justice. As the attacks on Christians continue in Africa, the organization Aid to the Church in Need has approved aid amounting to more than $9.5 million for the victims of Islamic fanaticism in the continent. The organization's executive president, Thomas Heine Galdern, says Africa has become a continent of martyrs and it underwent a, quote, harrowing Via Dolorosa in 2020. The aid will help mitigate the suffering of victims. Over the past few years, churches and church workers have increasingly been targeted and many nuns and priests were killed by fundamentalist outfits such as the Boko Haram. This outfit has ravaged the diocese of Maidiguri in Nigeria, leaving 2,000 women, widows, and several thousand children orphans. In Burkina Faso, tens of thousands of Christians have been rendered homeless by Islamist militants. Pope Francis is expressing solidarity with Armenia, which is commemorating the 106th anniversary of the gruesome Armenian genocide, has donated medical supplies to help the nation fight the surging COVID-19 cases. The Holy See has donated a new ambulance equipped with the latest mobile medical supplies and emergency respirators to assist COVID patients. It was handed over to the Redemptoris Mater Catholic Hospital in Ashatsk by Apostolic Nuncio Archbishop Jose Betancourt. The vehicle was blessed by the Archbishop himself in the presence of the hospital director, Father Mario Curacolio. The papal gifts arrived a day after the Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day, which recalls the systematic extermination of 1.2 million Armenians. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.